one night, Henry and Gordon were alone with James. Although the fat controller was beginning to think well of him, whenever a chance came, the other engines would talk of nothing but bootlaces. Remember the time one had to be used to get you out of trouble, James, they would tease. James tried to get his own back, talking about engines who got shut up in tunnels and stuck on hills. But they wouldn't listen. You talk too much, little James, said Gordon. A fine, strong engine like me has something to talk about. I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, they need two engines. Think of that. I've pulled expresses for years and have never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct. Every wise engine knows, of course, that the signalman works the points to make engines run on the right lines. But Gordon was so proud he had forgotten. Wake up, James, said Gordon next morning. It's nearly time for the express. What are you doing? Odd jobs? Oh, well, we all have to begin somewhere, don't we? Run along now and get my coaches. Don't be late. James went to get Gordon's coaches. They were all shining with lovely new paint. He was careful not to bump them, and they followed him smoothly into the station, singing happily, We're going away, we're going away. I wish I was going with you, said James. I should love to pull the express and go flying along the line. Gordon, with much noise and blowing of steam, got ready to back onto the train. The fat controller was on the train with other important people. And as soon as they heard the guard's whistle, Gordon started. Look at me now, look at me now, he puffed, and the coaches glided after him. Poop, 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 poop. Goodbye, little James, see you tomorrow. James watched the train disappear and then went back to work. He pushed some trucks into their proper sidings and went to fetch the coaches for another train. James had just brought the coaches to the platform when he heard a mournful noise. There was Gordon trying to sidle into the station without being noticed. Hello, Gordon. Is it tomorrow? asked James. Gordon didn't answer. He just let off steam feebly. Did you lose your way, Gordon? said James. No, it was lost for me. I was switched off the main line onto the loop. I had to go all round and back again. Perhaps it was instinct, said James. Meanwhile, all the passengers hurried to the booking office. We want our money back, they shouted. But the fat controller climbed on a trolley and blew the guard's whistle so loudly that they all stopped to look at him. Then he promised them a new train at once. Gordon can't do it, he said. Will you pull it for us, James? Yes, sir, I'll try. So James was coupled on and everyone got in. Do your best, James, said the fat controller. Come along, come along, Puff James. You're pulling as well, you're pulling as well, sang the coaches. Bridges and stations flashed by, the passengers cheered, and they soon reached the station. Everyone said thank you to James, and the fat controller was very impressed. Well done, he said. Would you like to pull the express sometimes? Yes, please, answered James. <coughs> Next day, when James came by, Gordon was pushing trucks. I like some quiet work for a change, he said. I'm teaching these trucks manners. You did well with those coaches, I hear. Good, we'll show them. And he gave his trucks a bump. James and Gordon are now good friends. James sometimes takes the express to give Gordon a rest. Gordon never talks about bootlaces, and they are both quite agreed on the subject of trucks.